those big beautiful rainbows. That's what trolling flies can do. You think trolling flies don't work? Well, think again. You need to grab a set of my trolling flies, get out on the water, and get ready to go big. Ha <laughs> ha, yes. Fish on the line. Fish on the line. Oh yeah. On the deep line. Fish on the line. And I got my other rod in, so that's good. Ooh, this is a, this is a horse. This is a nice fish. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, I'm gaining nothing on this fish. I am gaining nothing. Like Come on, baby. Into the last color of lead now. He hit like a ton of bricks. We'll see if he's as big as he feels. <laughs> what do you think it is? Oh, it's a trout. It's a trout. For sure. This is right where I caught that, well, where I hooked and lost that big one. I'm right in the same spot. So hopefully it's his, hopefully it's his twin, his twin sister. We'll see. Just real gentle here. Pedaling kind of into a, quartering into a wind and pedaling to keep the fish under control. Oh man, head shaking there. Oh, he's pulling drag. Woo, buddy. Oh boy. That's what you come to Lake Davis for, guys. Man. I still haven't seen him. He's right there, though. Get a flash once in a while. Oh, he's a nice fish. Come to Daddy. Oh, this is a nice, heavy holdover. Come here. Come on, baby. Come on, you're tired. Come on, you're going in the smoker. Come here. Oh, I got you. <laughs> oh, that's three pounds. That's every ounce of three. That's a nice fish. Oh, buddy. That's a stud right there. That is an awesome fish. That's the fish of the day. Um, that fish is probably, probably real close to three pounds. He's only about 17 inches, but he is husky. He is hefty, and what a fight. What an incredible fish. That's what you come to Lake Davis for. He couldn't lay off that orange fly. You retrieve that fly here. He could he could not lay off that fly. And that was down, I don't know, probably close to 20 feet, 17, 18 feet, something like that. Um, I was kind of quartering into the wind 1.6 miles an hour. And uh, that guy just came along and he hit like a ton of bricks. Think lead core lines obsolete? Well, think again. Look at those big, beautiful rainbows. I got these fish while trolling 15 to 20 feet deep, and I didn't use a downrigger. If you don't want the expense or hassle of using a downrigger, pick up one of my yellow lead core rods in the Fish Hunt Shoot Productions store and get ready to yell, fish on. Just like that, baby. Howdy guys, Cal Kellogg here. Um, big trout, small trout, medium-sized trout. Um, over the last several years, I've literally caught thousands of trout on lead core outfits of various configurations. And uh, I still have a lot of questions about lead core and I went a long way towards having some of them answered over the past couple weeks. Um, to make a long story short, I reached out to a walleye guy I, uh, I met through some forums and uh, you know, walleye guys back east, they use a lot of lead core line and I started asking him trout fishing questions and uh, he said I should talk to his friend Ron and he hooked me up with this guy named Ron that fishes the Great Lakes and I uh, I asked him I says you know is, is Ron gonna be willing to talk he goes well it's never a problem getting Ron started talking it's a problem getting him to stop so we started out online and then I actually had a series of phone calls with Ron and uh, long story short he's got about four decades of experience running lead core line and uh, I asked him the question, you know, one of the first questions I asked him, I said, does it seem like you catch, and this is, you know, one of my lead core outfits right here, one of my, my yellow lead core rods, I said, does it seem to you that you catch more fish when you're running lead core? And uh, he said, in a lot of situations, the answer is yes. And he had some interesting theories as to why and how you can enhance your lead core to catch even more fish. So. The first thing he told me, or he asked me, he says, did you ever notice, and I've talked about this on the channel and I didn't know why. He says, did you ever notice that, you know, you're trolling open water and all of a sudden your lead core will get bumpy, it will, it will, it will start to feel kinked inside the sheath 
and uh, then you'll start to see some little pieces of lead core actually poke through the sheath and you have to change your lead core and I said yeah absolutely and I don't understand why because I use trolling swivels I use rudders I use all that stuff to prevent line twist and I still seem to get line twist into that lead core and he said you know it's it's not being transmitted to the lead core from the lure it's the lead core itself going through the water. He said, lead core does some interesting things. And of course, this is all theory based on experience. There's really no way to measure these theories. But his thought is, is that lead core, it, it, it sinks into a belly as it goes through the water because it's heavy. And anytime you have something, you know, shaped, you know, like an inverted rainbow or a U-shape going through the water, it's going to tend to oscillate. And... Uh, he thinks that oscillation actually creates more strikes. Another thing he said that lead core does for you is when you make a turn or you're maneuvering the boat or you're varying speeds, you get a lot of up and down movement on the lure because the line, it's made out of lead. It wants to sink. So it translates to subtle movements in the lure which turn following fish into striking fish, if that makes sense. His final theory really blew me away. He said, I don't, I don't know what kind of lakes you fish in California. He said, some of the Great Lakes are very reactive in terms of if you leave your boat in a marina, you'll get growth on your zincs right away. Well, that's a coincidence because Wes and I have had our boat up at Collins Lake and we noticed we got growth on the zincs very quickly. He said, well, if you're fishing a lake where you're getting that growth on those zincs in a short amount of time, you know that that water is pretty reactive. And he said, when you're pulling lead core line through the water, it's reacting with the lead core line and it's putting out very subtle electronic impulses. And he, he described it as something akin to what's put out by an e-chip. And he is a firm believer that these that the, the, the impulses draw fish in and the subtle movements created by the lead core all combine to create more hookups and to put you on more big fish. And uh, he said, you can start testing this for yourself. He said, when he started out fishing lead core, he was running a hundred foot top shot. And he noticed the shorter the top shot or the shorter the leader he used, the more fish he caught, which you would think the opposite would be true. You would think more leader, more stealthy gets it away from that heavy lead core, you're gonna catch more fish. He said, no, the closer you get the lure to the end of the lead core, the better off you are. He said, you know, there's a sweet mix between being too close, but there's also a mix between being too far away. And he's really got me kind of rethinking the way that I rig up my lead core. Now, I've got a few weeks left in my guiding season for this winter, and uh, in the off season, I'm gonna spend a lot of time dialing in my lead core outfits and doing some serious experimentation. I mean, I'm catching a lot of good fish on my lead core right now, but as you know, if, you, if you've watched my lead core videos, I'll just run through it real quick. I use two basic setups. Everything has 20 pound braid backing, three colors of lead core, and a top shot of 20 pound fluorocarbon where I attach my leader. The, the main difference between the two rigs is one has a 25 foot top shot. That's the lead core outfit I use for fishing in deeper water, say 10 to 25 feet deep. And the other one has a 50 foot top shot that I can actually, you know, top line with it or I can put out one color. And that extra length of top shot allows me to get further behind the boat while just using one color of, of lead core. But, uh, you know, based on, on what I heard in those conversations, I'm really thinking about shortening up the section of lead core that I use to fish shallow, maybe to just a color and a half, which will enable me to run a shorter leader and to enjoy more of the benefits of the effects of lead core, whether it's electronic impulses, subtle movements on turns, the, the, the subtle um, oscillation of the line through the water, whatever. Bottom line is, I need to be able to fish, you know, five, six, eight, ten feet deep on one rod and deeper on the other rod, but I really want to experiment to see if I can score more fish by using a shorter leader. So, 
Um, these are things I'm going to be playing with, and of course, I'm going to report back to you guys, but I would encourage you guys to experiment too. Um, you know, a long time ago, the, the, the cool guys in trout fishing decided that lead core was obsolete, but I can tell you, it is having a massive rebirth. Anglers in the know um, run a lot of lead core. I mean, just, just look at what's happened, you know, to my guide service over the past, say, month. We've caught trout weighing seven, eight, and 12 pounds, plus a 25 inch, five pounder, five pound holdover. Every single one of those fish came on my lead core outfits. And I'm running down riggers, I'm running top lines, but all those big fish, they all came on my yellow lead core rod with my hybrid lead core setup. So, you know, after a while, you start to think this, this isn't chance. Um, th there's something behind this. Now, of course, lead core can't be used in all situations. If I'm at a lake where I need to get down 40, 50, 60, 100 feet deep, I'm not going to do it with lead core. I have to use my downriggers. But if the fish are up near the surface, it seems like there are some really, really strong benefits to using lead core. And, and the reasons behind those benefits, while they're not concrete science, there are a lot of theories why lead core will often outfish a downrigger working shallow or even a top line, you know, working a lure right near the surface. So anyway, just some questions and answers and theories about lead core. You know, I love lead core. I know a lot of guys out there love lead core. I can see all my lead core rods I sell every month and, uh, you know, that is, that is going well. So, um, put that in your in your data bank get out on the water do some experimentation if you're looking for gear including a yellow lead core rod go on over to fishhuntshoot.com and uh, we will get you set up with what you need i want to thank you guys for all the support i gotta go run a bunch of errands today i'm getting ready to head back up to collins lake soon so i'm jumping off for now but rest assured i will see you again right here on youtube real soon thanks a lot for all the support guys you have a wonderful day